Ladies and gentlemen, this is Red Skelton. In response to requests from millions of people, I'm sorry we say no. We present the program anyway. <laughs> From Hollywood, Procter & Gamble brings you the Red Skelton Show, starring Red Skelton, Dave Rose, and his orchestra, our singing stars, The Four Knights, Verna Felton, Lorene Tuttle, Pat McGee, and yours truly, Rod O'Connor. <laughs> yes, it's the Red Skelton Show, brought to you by Tide, Procter & Gamble's amazing new discovery for your whole family wash. Tide's in. Dirt's out. Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap. Any soap? Yes, any soap. Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap. T-I-D-E. Tide. And now for Metro Golden Mayor, the star of our show, Red Skelton. Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you tonight, O'Connor? Fine, Skelton. Uh, say, where have you been hiding all week? What's the matter? Did the West Coast gas shortage keep you in? No, when I couldn't get any gas, I just filled my tank with lighter fluid. <laughs> Did your car run? No, but it made the prettiest blue flame. <laughs> well, look, what are you going to do this coming week? Well, I'm flying to Washington, D.C. tonight. I've been asked to entertain before Secretary of State General Marshall mm -hmm. for, uh, for the Humanitarian Award, and I was asked to be there. Why? Oh, some of the old gang thought it would be fun to take a hike up into the mountains and have a... Wasn't it subtle the way I said that? Huh? <laughs> and have a civilian bivouac. Uh, do you have a sleeping bag? Yeah. Oh, you want it? I think it's a sleeping bag. I bought it at an army surplus store. I think it's one of those cases they carry shellos in. <laughs> oh, sorry I said that, brother. <laughs> well, what do you mean, Mr. Bones? <laughs> You know, I sure have a dull part tonight, don't I? <laughs> what do you mean? I think the writers have captured your air personality for the first time. Yeah, well, let's get back to the sleeping bag. <clears throat> let's bring the words closer together, old boy. You're proud of that, ain't you? <laughs> now, don't go get mad. I'm not mad. Well, I love you like Truman loves Congress. <laughs> Well, what do you know about sleeping bags? Well, did you ever try to get into one of those things? Boy, they're, they're awful. It's like trying to put your pants on in an upper berth. You know? <laughs> no kidding. I went camping last summer, and, and you get into this thing, see, and you zip yourself up, and just you start to doze off one of the kids and, hey, Bob, I'm cold. <laughs> so you get up, and you give them your blanket, and you crawl back in a zipper bag, and you zip it up again, and you're laying there watching the mosquitoes <laughs> prepare your nose for surgery. <laughs> Don't go away. I may want to read the script again. <laughs> Anyhow, you do <laughs> Anyhow, you, do you doze off to sleep again, and just then your wife says, Psst, Hey, honey, I think somebody's ramsacking the car. Well, then what do you do? Try to convince her it's just uh, some used car dealer's talent scout looking it over? Oh, no, you sure how brave you are, and you grope around for the flashlight, see? Mm -hmm. Finally, when you find it, the kid's been playing with it all day, and the battery's so weak you have to light a match to see if the bulb's <laughs> And how you start for the car, see, and you sneak over real, and you don't want to wake up the other campers. Mm -hmm. So very quietly you say, Who's there? <laughs> Well, who was there? Nobody but a nice, friendly 500-pound bear. You mean you came face-to-face -face with a bear? No, he followed me. <laughs> and only one <laughs> well, Red, I'm surprised at you. I heard those bears up in the national parks are so tame they eat off your hand. Yeah, I got news for you, bub. They like arms and legs, too. <laughs> Our Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap. Any soap? Yes, any soap. Uh, simmer down there, sister. Simmer down. <laughs> You're covering a lot of ground there. I was over to my Uncle Cal Cadiddlehopper's general store, and they really got a mess of different kinds of soap there, and a lot of them are new sudsers, too. <laughs> 
Well, Clem, Tide gets clothes cleaner than any known wash day product, soap or sudzer, new or old. Oh? Nothing you can buy will get your family wash as clean as Procter & Gamble's Tide. Oh, I see. Notice I said family wash. That includes everything. Your heavy work clothes, as well as your best linens and prints. Tide leaves them all free from dirt. And Tide removes dingy soap film, too. Yet with all this amazing cleaning power this takes, Tide is safe. Truly safe for all your washable colors. What's more, Tide actually brightens those soap-dull colors. As for white things, in hardest water, Tide gets them whiter than any other washing product known. Tide keeps them white, too, week after week. Never turns them yellow. When you're using Tide, you're using the only wash day product known that gives all this the cleanest, brightest, whitest wash you ever hung on the line. All right, now, kiddies, gather around the radio and we'll get some old foot patting music going. The four nights are here. What are you going to sing, boys? A little song. A vibe. Brother Bill. Oh, me and Brother Bill went hunting up in the woods of the eastern Maine. Now the reason why we went up there, well, we thought we could catch some game. As me and Brother Bill walked hunting way over in the middle of the night, we shot at something the back of grizzly bear, but the dog on thing turned white. So I dropped that gun, we dropped that gun, and the way I run, and the way I run, Brother Bill said, boy, what's the matter with you? I had an old like me, he'd run some too. I run so fast, they say. They couldn't catch me all day The way I run across that field They couldn't catch me with an automobile Brother Bill got so excited That he took a shot at me That bullet whistled past my ears Zing! Hit a tree I run until I was exhausted My feet were dragging the ground Come on, big feet, don't fail me now Oh, the manly bammy bound Oh, drop that gun And away I run Brother Bill said, boy, what's the matter with you? We had an old like me, he'd run some too. I run so fast, they say, they couldn't catch me all day. The way I run across that field, they couldn't catch me with an automobile. Well, I ran right past my house, but I didn't have time to knock. And I ran right past a big dice game, I didn't even have time to stop. And I ran right by a gin mill, and I stopped to get a shot of gin. But I didn't have a dime to pay for it. So I had to start running again. Oh, I drop that gun, I drop that gun. And away I run, and away I run. A brother Bill said, Boy, what's the matter with you? And no one like me, you run some too. I run so fast, they say. They couldn't catch me all day. No. The way I run across that field, they couldn't catch me with an automobile. <laughs> People you'll meet sooner or later. Break it, will you? Break it, will you? <laughs> Have you ever sold something that was dear to you just because someone told you that you should for your own good? Well, I knew an old cowboy like that once called Dead Eye. He sold something he wanted. You will, too, sooner or later. <laughs> You don't... Oh, boy, I ain't gonna give you no more of them home permanents, and then we won't look like twins anymore. <laughs> now, come on in. Whoa. All right, all right, all right. So you threw me. Now stop prancing around like gorgeous George, will you? <laughs> come on over here, you no-good critter. I'll teach you a little... Hey, you saddle bum. Don't what? yell at your horse like that. Let me give you a tip. We don't mistreat a horse in these parts. Why well, ain't it bothering you, ma'am? <laughs> Say, don't I know you from somewhere? I never forget a face. Well, you should have forgotten the one you're wearing. I'll tell you. <laughs> Let me see that horse. I know that horse. I've got it, you dead eye. Your horse is a dead giveaway. Yeah, he's a giveaway, but he ain't dead, is he? <laughs> Dead eye. Don't you remember me? Well, now, I've seen that shape somewhere. Now, could it have been, uh... No, no. That was tied to the pier in Frisco. <laughs> you look like something like old vulture bait Kate. That's me. Well, Katie, old gal, it's good to see you again. Well, it's good to see you too, Dead yeah. Eye. 
I ain't seen you for a year and a day. Yeah. What you been doing? A year and a day. <laughs> Come back here. Oh, why shouldn't I come back here? Well, hmm? you did disappear after the big bank robbery. Oh, now the folks in these parts don't think I robbed a bank, do they? Well, your horse was in front of the bank, and there was a big explosion, yeah. and you come running out with a big bag of money and rode away. Yeah, it does look suspicious, don't it? <laughs> but everybody knows I ain't no bandit. Why well, only did that for a joke? Then why didn't you return the money? Because I ain't got no sense of humor. <laughs> Well, Vulture Katie, it's, uh, you ain't going to turn me in, are you? No, I reckon not, because yeah. I still like you, did I? Oh. But let me give you a tip. If What's you don't that? want nobody to know you're around, you get rid of that nag. Yeah? Why, I recognized your horse before I recognized you. Yeah, it's a good idea, but uh, tell me, will you be waiting here till I get back? Yeah? I sure will, lover boy. <laughs> Let's not get sickening about this. <laughs> I'll see you later, clabber girl. Come on. <laughs> Let's go over and see the honest engine, the used horse dealer. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Hey, partner, where will I find the honest engine? You're speaking to him, Toothless. What do you want to see me about? Well, I got a horse I'd like to trade in on a later model, uh, something that moves. <laughs> well, you have something to trade in? Yeah, this filly I'm riding. Kind of sway back, ain't she? No, that's the latest thing in a horse. You have to step down to get on. <laughs> what do you think of her? Look, Cactus Head, you better ride on. I ain't interested. Uh, look, partner. Yeah. I don't mean to cause no trouble, but I'm a warning you. You're chatting with Dead Eye, the roughest, toughest hombre this side of the YWCA, YMCA. <laughs> oh, you're tough, eh? Yeah, and to prove it, I'll just empty my six shooter and eat the bullets. Now, what? There, now I swallowed them, too. That was a silly thing to do. Yeah, I think it was. I feel like I got a little indigestion now. I hope I don't get the hiccups with them uh, bullets inside of me. Why, what would happen if you had hiccups? I don't know, but stand back. I think we're going to find out. <laughs> Tell me, how do I look with only one head now? <laughs> well, indeed, how about the horse deal? I think you better get that nag out of here. She's turning to glue right in front of our eyes. Oh, what are you talking about? Well, look at her stance. Look how steady she stands there. I've got news for you, Pack Rat. She ain't standing. Well, she's leaning against that fence. Well, that's because she's tired for <laughs> waiting for us to come to turns here. Look, I'll walk her away from the fence. Come on now, now, look up a little. Move your legs, will you, girl? Come on. There. You see, she can't even stand up. Oh, sure she can. She's just a victim of regulated training. Comes five o'clock, she lays down and takes a nap no matter where she is. <laughs> now, come on, girl, get up, get up now. Here, here, better stand back. I never know what she does, going to do when she rears up on her knees like that. <laughs> Look at that. Ain't that a sight, brother? Now, you put a tired end in on her back, and you've got the most perfect picture of the end of the trail you ever wanted to see. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm afraid that I can't do business with you. Yeah? Mm. Well, you got to. My life depends on it. I mean, uh, she's not that bad. Why, she's one of the best quarter horses around. Yeah? We'll bring around the other three quarters, and if it's breathing, we'll make a deal. Yeah? Look, did I? Truthfully, how old is this hay burner? Well, between you and me, I should bring a nice price as an antique. I think she was with Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders. Because whenever I comb her tail... <laughs> Get ready for it, folks. Here it comes. <laughs> I think she was with Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders because every time I comb her tail, she gets mad if I don't remember the mane. <laughs> so, he was with old Teddy, eh? Yeah, first lieutenant. Well, I'll tell you. I'll give you a dollar for her and that horse over there. Okay, it's a deal. Well, goodbye, old pal. <laughs> Stop crying. Right? <laughs> you find a nice horse. Hey. What's wrong with her? Well, all horses buck around like that. Uh, look, look, look at her turn. Look at that. Turn the whip for... Well, how about that? Well, I've never seen her act like that before. 
And you won't again, either. She's dead. Dead? <laughs> Not my old pal, Kim Pone. <laughs> Going to greener pastures, huh? You must have a strong union, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how much I needed her. Why, I won't be able to go on without her now. Buck up, did I? Gee, I've never seen such loyalty toward a friend. Here, let me give you a horse to fill the empty spot in your heart. Well, that's mighty neighborly of you. Why, look, she's moving. Here, here, lay down, gal. Play dead, will you? Say, she ain't dead after all. No, but she's going to be. She pulls a new trick every time I try to get rid of her. Well, I'll fix her this time. Did I? No. Put that gun back in your holster. I'm tired of her being a boss. I'm getting her own way all the time. Come on behind the barn, you four-legged ornery critter, you. I'll teach you to mess up here. Did I? What happened? Hide, man, hide. That crazy horse took the gun away from the horse. Tell what she'll do. <laughs> Uh, next Monday night, September the 20th, uh, Dave Rose will produce a benefit ball at the Hollywood uh, Palladium Ballroom for the Disabled American Veterans. And now Dave will, and his Procter & Gamble Orchestra will play one of the numbers from his show, It's Magic. Thank you, Dave Rose. When you go in a store today, you see rows and rows of wash day products of all kinds. And perhaps you think they're pretty much alike. But I assure you, one is different. Tide is different from any other washing product you can buy. Procter & Gamble's Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap, any other suds, any other kind of wash day product known. Tide leaves your whole family wash free from dirt. And Tide removes dingy soap film, too. 
Yet with all this terrific cleaning power, Tide is safe. Truly safe for all your washable colors. In fact, Tide actually brightens soap dull colors. And white things? In hardest water, Tide gets them whiter than any other washing product known. Yes, Tide is different. Even the suds look and feel different. And you get oceans of them, even in hardest water. No other wash day product known. Only Tide will give you all this. The cleanest, brightest, whitest wash you ever hung on the line. Now for a page from the Mean Little Kid's Diary. You remember how when you were a little kid, how fond you were of candy and sometimes the trouble it got us into? Well, especially if you had a sweet tooth like Junior, the Mean Little Kid. Junior, is that you? Mommy, is that you? Yes. Then it's not me, Dad. Junior. Oh, darling, what happened? Where did you get that black eye? I ran into a doorknob. Now, Junior, don't fib. I'm not fibbing. I ran into a doorknob. Widow Dickie Orland was holding it in his fist. <laughs> have you been fighting? Yes, I have. That Widow Dickie Orland says that Grandpa was a big drunk. And you said he wasn't a drunk. I said he wasn't big. <laughs> well, young man, that black eye is going to cost you a spank. Now, hold on, kiddo. Why don't you wait until you find out about me bloody nose and the tooth I lost in the front before you start paying off? I don't like this installment plan stuff. <laughs> I give up. Yeah. Do you realize that I get gray-haired every day and it's all your fault? Well, it wouldn't be if I wouldn't hide your hen a wrench. <laughs> sure. Can I go out and play? Yes, but don't go too far away because I have to clean you up before the company arrives. Okay, I don't like that. She cleans up on me before company comes in and she cleans up on me after they leave. <laughs> Are we going to have company? We're going to have company. I wonder if it's somebody I've met before. No, they wouldn't risk a second. <laughs> Company, that means fresh peanuts and candy and all the dishes. Well, I'd better go back and take a peek in the living room again, boy. I gotta be quiet as a widow mouse. <laughs> oh, that's silly. A rat like me disguising himself as a mouse. <laughs> I'll take a look in there. I was right. Look at the dishes all filled with candy. Oh, look at that big dish of candy there. Now let's see. Mmm, that's good, boy. That's good. One. Are you having fun, candy thief? Yeah, well, come on in, but be quiet because your <laughs> mummy or grandpa might... No! <laughs> you tricked me. Well, what have you to say, Junior? Well, and I... get those dirty little lunch hooks out of that candy dish. <laughs> well, I'll just take this little piece of candy that I suppose here. I said no. Oh, oh you have me, you have me. <laughs> now I'm going to tell on you. I'll wait till the company gets here and tell on you. I have nothing to hide. My life is an open book. Yeah, but I got a footnote that everybody will get a kick out of. <laughs> Very well. What are you going to tell? I'll tell everybody that you was, you was uh, handling one of the oars when, when Washington crossed the Delaware. Oh, now that's ridiculous. Oh, it is, huh? Hey, Vernon, look, the general's standing up in the bow. Hey, sit down, George. You're rocking the boat. <laughs> With you. Okay, I'll just take along something to nibble no, on. No, you don't. <laughs> Not so hard. How many times do I have to tell you to stay out of that candy dish? Well, I don't know how many pieces of candy are left in there. <laughs> can I have some? Why can't I have some? Because you'll spoil your dinner. Well, why can't I just have candy for my dinner? Because it'll spoil your supper. Look, kiddo, by the time supper comes, I will be in so much hot water, I will be sent to bed without my supper anyhow, so what do I got to lose? <laughs> I said keep out. Oh, that, now, look, you give me some candy, I'm going to bang my head on the piano. Junior, you, you stop banging your head on the piano. We just had it tuned. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, she loves me like Wallace loves omelets. <laughs> Oh, sweet tooth Charlie is acting up because oh, I won't yeah, give him yeah, some yeah, candy. Yeah. <laughs> Why can't I have some? I need need sugar. Me widow body needs sugar. Sugar builds energy. And I need energy to stand here and, and argue with you. <laughs> now, listen. <laughs> I just got myself in time, boy. <laughs> and I got my mouth washed out with tide. You know? <laughs> Down with Crisco. Junior, hmm? there was enough sugar in that piece of cake I gave you ten minutes ago. Mother! You mean to say that you gave him a piece of cake? Yeah. You admit you've been spoiling him with sweets? 
Well, don't just give up easy like. Tell her I made you do it at the point of a gun. You don't have to answer. I'll get Jerry Gessler. He'll get you out of this. Now, keep quiet. Mother, I want to know why you insist on spoiling him. Spoil? I smell this way all the time. That is the most ridiculous statement I ever heard. Now, you give him more sweets than I do. Well, I should. After all, I'm his mother. Well, we thought you wanted to keep that a secret. Spend his affection in any manner I see fit. Yes, he should. Now, top that one, fat girl. (laughs) Well, I I gave him that cake because he was hungry. And I'd do it again. Yeah, do it now. Do it now. We'll show her. (laughs) Look, keep peace in the family. I'll just help myself to a widow candy and you get out of there. What's the matter with you? A minute ago, you was on my side. You get upstairs and go to your room. Ain't you going to let me meet the company? No. These people we like. Yeah. <laughs> now, go on. Okay, double-cross. That's what I was. By my own grandma, too. Well, from now on, I'm a lone wolf. Goodbye, communist! Oh, oh, child. Oh, don't let him upset you. I'm sorry I lost my temper, Mother. Oh, well, it's all right, dear. I... Oh, look. It's gone. What's gone? The candy dish. That little rascal, he took it upstairs with him. Now, Lorene, it's up to you to take that boy in hand. Well, I intend to, Mother, but let's not frighten him. Hmm. We know that he took the dish of candy. But let's be diplomatic and pretend that we don't. All right, Junior. Where is it? Where's what? Now, look, little poker face. What's the name of that thing? I can't quite... <laughs> we want to know about that candy dish. What candy dish? Now, look, young man. There were only three of us in the living room where the candy dish was. Yes? But now the candy dish is gone. Do tell. And I think I know who took it. And I think I know who took it. And I think I know who took it. <laughs> but I hope none of us is stool pigeons. <laughs> There it is, under the bed. Oh, no, no. Well, what do you know? How did that get there, I wonder? I'll have to punish you, young man. <laughs> you, you whip me, you whip me. You beat me all the time. But it didn't hurt. <laughs> oh, it didn't. No, it didn't. Well, this is going to hurt you. What? Your grandmother and I are going to eat all the candy and oh. not give you any. Well, go ahead and eat it. I don't care. I'll just close my eyes and not watch you. How do you like that? All right. Yeah. Here, Mother, a piece of candy for oh, you. Okay. Thank you, Loreen. Not even going to look at you. Are his eyes still shut? Still shut. Hmm? Eat your candy, Mother. It looks delicious. I wouldn't. Oh, my. Oh. I can hardly wait to bite into it. Oh. Oh. Good heavens. It's just like biting into a rock. Oh, my lower plate's ruined. <laughs> oh, there went my inlay. Let me see that dish of candy. Look. He filled the candy dish with rocks. That's it. I'm going to give him the whipping of his life. Oh, now, get right back in the nest. No, 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 no. Well, I just go to show you if you don't keep your eyes open, you're liable to feel the consequence in the end. <laughs> Thanks for being with us tonight, and we hope you liked our program well enough to be with us next week. So until next Friday... This is Red Skelton saying goodbye now, and thanks for listening, and thanks for buying more and more of that wash day miracle, Tide. Tide's in. Dirt's out. Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap. T-I-D-E. Tide. Procter and Gamble invite you to join us again with Red Skelton next Friday. Now stay tuned to The Life of Riley, which follows immediately. Red Skelton is heard in this program through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer. See you in Washington, D.C. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.